Hello, welcome to this CWP tutorial on how to manage PHP version switchers and selectors on Control Web Panel. CWP gives you three main tools to manage your PHP settings, and these are all located in the PHP settings submenu in the sidebar on your admin panel. These are PHP version switcher, PHP selector 2, and PHP FPM selector. Each tool can run versions PHP 5.3, and 7.0, and 3 right up to the latest build. PHP version switcher is the main PHP version in CWP, which is used as a default for all new clients and domains. PHP selector allows multiple PHP versions, which different users can run all at the same time with a different version per folder. So you can actually run unlimited instances of all available PHP versions at the same time with each running in a different folder. PHP FPM selector allows you to run any single version of PHP FPM per domain or subdomain under the same account. This is activated in the web service domain configuration from the sidebar menu in the CWP admin panel. This also allows you to use different web server setups with each version for example, you can run various combinations of Nginx, Apache, and Varnish. Best of all is that you're not forced to choose just one switcher or selector, because CWP lets you combine them. For example, you could use PHP switcher to run PHP 5.6 on your root domain, and then use PHP selector 2 to run versions 5.4 and 5.3 on different subfolders in that same domain, and then you could use PHP FPM selector to run version 7.2 and 7.1 on different subdomains under that same root domain. Let's take a look at PHP version switcher. PHP version switcher shows your current PHP version and you can check your loaded PHP modules here. This opens the PHP short info page, which you can also access here under the PHP settings. To change your main PHP version, you can just select from the drop down list here from any of the available PHP versions. And this will set the new default PHP for all new users and domains. Once you select a build, you'll be given the option to configure your modules. So for example, if there's any modules that aren't currently selected, you can just choose to check mark that box and then go ahead and save and build with one click. If you want to check your PHP compile logs, you can do so with the file manager. You can just open up advanced file manager here from the sidebar and you'll find them in the folder path var slash log. under PHP Rebuild, and you can check those here. PHP Switcher also allows you to add custom build flags. To do that, simply access your admin file manager and navigate to user, local, CWP serve, htdocs, resources, conf, PHP Switcher. And from here, you can modify the relevant file with your custom build flag. You just scroll to the bottom and at the end you can add your custom build and save. But remember it would be a good idea to save a copy of this, a separate copy, because on the next CWP update, this file will be overwritten. So if you save this as 7.1b, then you'll be able to recopy your information back each time there's an update. Next, let's take a look at PHP Selector 2. Similar to the PHP Switcher, you just have to select your version and configure your modules. And
then save your configuration if you make any changes. And then go back to the PHP Selector 2 screen. Now you'll notice that we just configured those options without actually having selected a version. And that's because the options configuration is global to all versions within this version. So this configuration is good for every build of 7.3. It is important, however, to choose your specific version for each PHP that you want to build, because when you click Start Compiler, any PHPs that are still marked Change Version will not be built. So make your, all of your selections before you click Start Compiler. You can reset your options, you can list your modules, you can check your PHP info, or edit your PHP INI. From here, you can start the compiler to build and install, and this will take about 30 minutes. By using PHP Selector 2, you have the ability to change your version in each of your subfolders. And this is done through the User File Manager. So to access that, we'll open up our user accounts and list accounts. And we'll find the username that we want to modify. And we'll click the Tools icon to open Panel. And this will open our user panel. So from here, we can go to the file management submenu and open our file manager in the sidebar. From the file manager, we can access public HTML. And then here we'll find the HT access file. And here we can use the icon to edit. And in each folder where we want to run a different PHP version, we only need to define it in the HT access file. So for example, if we wanted this folder to run PHP 5.6, we would just add an, a line here, add handler application slash x dash httpd dash php 56 space dot php. Next, let's take a look at PHP FPM selector. Similar to the other tools, first we have to choose our PHP version and configure our modules options. If we make any changes to the extensions list, we just have to save our custom configuration. Then go back to our setup screen. And just like we saw with PHP Selector 2, the options configuration is global to all versions within this PHP version. So we don't have to have our uh, version selected just yet. Uh, this configuration will apply to all builds within this version, no matter which version of 7.3 we choose. But we do have to be sure that we select a version uh, before we start the compiler, because any versions that still say change version will not be built. We can reset our options. We can delete our version. We can list the modules that we have currently loaded. We can access the PHP info. And we can edit our PHP INI. Once we're ready, we can just start the compiler to build and install. And that takes anywhere from 5 to 30 minutes. It depends on the server you're using and the number of PHP versions you're building. And once it's installed, we can click Start to run the PHP FPM. The real power of PHP FPM Selector, though, takes place under the Web Server Settings menu. We'll open up Web Server's Domain Configuration. Now, with CWP servers, you have the highest flexibility that you could ever imagine. You can run different web server setups for each domain and even combine other servers and have many other possibilities. Simply start by selecting a username. 
What's interesting here is that you can run a different version for each domain and subdomain under the same account. Another nice feature is that if you're working with multiple domains, you can configure several domains at once just by putting a check mark in each of the domains that you want to configure, and then you can use the Custom Config All Selected button up at the top. But if you're only configuring a single domain, you don't need to check mark the box. You can just click the Create Configuration button within the same row as the domain that you're working with. Now we can select a web server setup. And we can choose any combination of Nginx, Apache, or Varnish, along with proxies and custom ports. We recommend going with Nginx, Varnish, and Apache so you have the most options. From here, you can configure your vhost templates. So the template types are set by the web server's configuration up here. So uh, the Nginx template type is set to default, which is proxy to the next web server. Uh, to access the PHP FPM in Nginx, we would have to change our web server configuration. So we could do that here, and that would give us access to the Nginx PHP FPM. But we'll stay with the Nginx Varnish Apache PHP FPM in order to have the most options. You can choose your Varnish template. And Apache is set to PHP FPM. The default would normally be CGI, but again, because we chose that in the configuration here, uh, the template type is set. And we can select a vhost template for Apache as well. If we built multiple PHP uh, FPM versions, we could select our version here. In this case, there is only one. And remember to check mark the box to rebuild the web server's configuration for the domain on save. And then you can go ahead and click Save Changes. If you'd like to create a new web server's vhost template, you can access that through the admin file manager and go to user local CWP serve htdocs resources onf web servers. The main configuration templates are held in the main folder and the vhost configuration templates are under the vhost folder. The Apache templates are held in the HTTP folder and the others have names like Nginx and Varnish. Within each folder, you'll see a set of files that are labeled TPL for HTTP and STPL for HTTPS. Now, it's important not to simply edit any of the existing templates because on the next update, your changes will be overwritten. So the best way to go about that is to copy one of the existing templates under a new name and make your changes there. And remember, you'll need both the TPL and STPL files. So that covers the basics of PHP switchers and selectors. If you have any further questions, please consult the Control Web Panel Wiki at wiki.centos-webpanel.com, where we have lots of detailed articles with examples given. Or check the forum and you're sure to find some help there. Thanks very much for watching.